of we will discuss little later then location if I give the name you will understand that sulfingitis that involves the sulfings a tube then parametritis then myometritis endometritis Okay, automatically you can understand that what are the sites? The sulfingitis is a tube. Fallopian tube. Parametritis, the uterus and um, the broad ligament. Utera, uterine serosa and broad ligament myometritis is a myometrium endometrium is the endometrium endometritis is endometrium okay so these are the sites we need to understand that disease can spread over there so now i will discuss about the sono appearance okay so of the pid let me take this out i need a space Okay, sono appearance of pelvic inflammatory disease, sono appearance of PID. So as we understood that it could infect the fallopian tube, then myometrium, endometrium, the broad ligament, ovary. So let me go one by one. If it causes Sulfingitis. So if it attack fallopian tube, fallopian tube, it will cause sulfingitis. Then what is sulfingitis? Sulfingitis is the inflammation of the Fallopian tube. Okay, inflammation of the fallopian tube. And as we know that fallopian tube has a connection with the uterus. And another opening is on the pelvic cavity. And fallopian tube has the mm, wall. Okay, and when there's infection on the fallopian tube, the wall will be thickened and it will produce a lot of debris. And you will see the fallopian tube containing the fluid and you will see the anechoic area. Because of the anaquacity or sonolucent, it looks like a, a tube filled with fluid and you will see the anaquic. Okay? And when it is infected, it not like this. It is now
It is now like this. It is now tortuous like a S shape or snake like tortuous filled with fluid because it is inflamed. Inflamed. Okay? At this time we call it hydrosulfing. So sulfingitis will cause hydrosulfings. Hydrosulfings that is fluid and this hydrosulfings means watery, right? And it gives the sonolucent, sonolucent appearance. And this sonolucent can be uh, fluid, due to fluid, due to pus, due to blood. Now understand, if it is simply fluid, that we can feel like uh, maybe that is no infection. This fluid can be due to some other cause. But when patient has a fever, pain, then we consider that it is a pus inside. And the pus is not clearly sonolucent. There is an internal echo you can see and easily you can see it is too much dilated. Normally fallopian tube we don't see unless there is a fluid content inside and those fluid can be clear fluid, plain fluid, pass, blood and with some disease condition. So according to the disease onset, patient will complain accordingly. Okay? If there is a trauma or surgery, it could be blood in there. Okay? So that's the way you will see the sulfings, there is um, tubes and this will appear the anechoic snake-like structure within the adnexa. This appearance is similar to a tortuous vessels. Okay, so now differential diagnosis, how are we going to do? It could be tortuous vessels. And these tortual vessels is also anechoic. Same as this. What do you need to do? If it is a blood vessels, we need to click the color. Whatever it is, you just saw like this. Don't you think you need to click the color? Yes. Why? I want to make sure it is not a blood vessels. What happened if it is a blood vessels? If it is a blood vessels, it would be colorful. When it is coloring, that means it is a blood vessels. And blood vessels can be tortuous. Because the pelvic venous congestion can cause tortuous of the blood vessels. Okay? So that's the way you can differentiate that is the color. Okay? So now, and um, this is about the sulfingitis and the next is parametritis parametritis let's see what it says as you know the parametritis means the perimetrium and the broad ligaments are uh, infected and keep that in mind both on the right and left side so in parametritis there will be generalized distortion of the pelvic anatomy Generalized distortion of pelvic anatomy. 
What does that mean? It means because of the infection in the pelvic cavity, infection can cause edema, swollen, displacement, false um, uh, tightness because of the false uh, uh, band formation and whole abdomen you will see it is distorted whole pelvic cavity distorted why because the ovary is not in the ovarian side uterus is not in the midline fallopian tube is tortuous and the pelvic muscles are gloomy feel like there's a snowstorm is coming in the tornado is coming in is like that okay so there will be ill-defined hypoechoic area within the adrenexa. Ill-defined hypoechoic areas in the pelvic cavity. Okay, so this is um, parametritis and uterine inflammation. Uterine inflammation, this is um, uh, myometriitis and endometriitis. So you will see uterine inflammation will cause the endometrium and or myometrium to become thickened. So endo and myo will have increased thickness because of the inflammation inflammation causes uh, edema and uh, vasodilatations congestion so thickness will go up and um, the echogenicity is usually hyper -equic when compared to the normal uterine tissue increased echogenicity because of the inflammation and um, but it may become complex or complex echogenicity could be complex some area is hypo some area is hyper some area is iso some area is anechoic so multiple conditions you can see okay and um, this is uterine inflammation when there's a myometrium and endometrium and another bad things can happen that is called tubo ovarian abscess T O A tubo ovarian abscess. You need to know this very much because it is a very bad condition when the patient's um, uh, immune, um, the resistance capacity is very poor. Infection can cause a method of the ovary, fallopian tube, and broad ligament. And it looks like a complex heterogeneous mass with pus collection. Patients uh, is very sick with a very high rise of temperature and the very tenderness. Okay, and it form with severe PID associated with severe PID. This will appear as a complex complex cyst because of the pass inside involving the ovary and associated um, pyosulfings. Complex cyst looking uh, due to ovary 
and pyo sulfings okay sulfing pyo is pinx okay pinx okay so it looks like a complex due to the ovarian and pyosulfings. Okay, so now uh, let me draw the two diagram. One is you will see in, in hydrosulfings, you will see. If you see in the nexal area, there is a hypoechoic, uh, anechoic tube like that. So this is hydrosulfings, okay? Hydro or pyo pyosulfings. And when you see like this, You are scanning and you found this type of area and ill-defined ovary you can see and around it is a lot of exudates and the fallopian tube, you will see the fallopian tube is coming like this. And you cannot differentiate the fallopian tubes. It is like this. And these are pockets of pass. Okay, we will call it tubo ovarian abscess. Okay, so these all are PID, and um, after this, we will discuss about the uh, uterine pathology. And um, so, I will have another lecture on the uterine pathology. So, right now, I'm done with this uh, pelvic inflammatory uh, diseases and um, make sure you understand that there will be a lot of questions in the board exam from the PID because it's common and it is common in our society because of unprotected sexual or biological activities the infection is spreading every corner if you don't maintain your personal hygiene and it is more common in teenage and early 20s and also it is also common when somebody is using the IUD when somebody is using the IUD, then they feel like, oh, okay, I don't need any protection, no barrier. So they will have uh, multiple partners and unprotected activities, biological activities, and infection will spread, or will be contaminated and then spread. So if body immunity is more low, so then 
patient PID can be spread very quickly on both sides and all the female reproductive organs will be adhesioned tight each other that can cause the infertility and in this situation if somebody get pregnant and the most of the time it is ectopic pregnancy so understand the life is so tough and dangerous if somebody has PID how are you going to know that there is a PID you will see um, the not all the organs are located in the same location the way you want to see the anatomy is distorted and you push that feel pain because of the tightness okay so make sure you got the more patient like this in our society in our um, uh, chamber in our uh, examining room in our lab so more the questions will be in the board exam so you have to understand that the what would be the sonographic presentation you need, do I need to take the history oh yes if you take the history you will see half of your uh, diagnosis is done then rest of them match with the blood report and the sonographic view you will say your diagnosis is there and you will be the uh, good sonographer okay thank you very much for paying attention okay so next uh, i will discuss about the uterine pathology okay thank you very much bye